It's America's great pastime. This is a song I wrote about a year and a half ago. It's called Slide. And I thought it would be a good example to use for our control room presentation because it has a lot of the traditional instruments that a band would use, like a bass and drums and piano and vocals. Although it wasn't recorded with a band, it was recorded mostly with virtual instruments. We're going to pretend like it was or is going to be recorded with the real band. And we're going to use the control room to facilitate that process. So now that we've got our preferences all set for this tutorial, we're going to start with this project. And this project currently is set up with no control room active. So a lot of you probably have your project set up in a similar way. And I'll show you here, if we go into the devices menu here and VST connections, you'll notice that under outputs, we have a stereo out and it is assigned currently to our speakers, our main monitor speakers. And that's what uh, the outputs that I'm using for my speakers at, for the purposes of this presentation. One thing I want to point out is that the stereo out, and this is likely the case for you as well, has this little speaker icon next to it. And that indicates that that output is, is set as the main mix. And you can set that by right clicking on the stereo out channel and set stereo out as main mix. This is important not only because the main mix output becomes the default output for any newly created audio group or FX channel, but it's also important in the control room as it uses the main mix, whatever the output is set as the main mix, as the default channel that is sent to the control room. And I'll explain more about that as we get into it. But that's something to be aware of. So whatever this speaker icon is connected to in your outputs, that's where uh, that's what the control room is going to get initially. So currently, if I start the project, the stereo out is what we're going to hear because it's co di connected directly to our speakers. So whatever's coming through this is what we hear. There's no way to change that really. It's just the way it is. You can change what comes through the stereo out by soloing tracks and muting tracks and grouping tracks together and setting levels. And that generally is what you'd want to do when you're mixing your song. But it's not necessarily what you would want when you're tracking your song. You might want to hear something else. And you might not want to have to upset the balance of your mix in order to hear that something else. And this is what the control room is all about. So in order to set up the control room, the first thing you need to do is go to the VST Connections window, go to the Studio tab, and turn on the control room, which is right here. Once I do that, you'll notice that these listen buttons in the mixer have now become active. And I can turn them on, I can turn them off, and before the control room was activated, they were inactive. I will explain what the listen buttons do and what the listen bus is all about in the next video. But for now, we'll start with opening the control room mixer. And you'll see that by in turning on the control room, we have created a control room channel which right now is a copy of the stereo out channel. It's not the same thing, but it's a copy of it. And right now, if I play my project, both meters will be active. It's basically the same exact signal going to both locations. But we are currently listening to the stereo out output and not the control room channel. And I'll demonstrate that by lowering this fader and you'll notice that the music stays there because we're actually listening to this channel, not the control room channel. We're about to change that. So I'm going to raise this back up. I'm going to stop the music. And in order to change that, we have to create a monitor channel, which is something that our speakers will connect to, something that we will send out through our audio interface to our speakers. In order to do that, we go to the VST connections, we add a channel, we add a monitor. This is what your speakers will be hooked up to. Monitor 1, we'll leave it at that in the stereo configuration. OK. And now I've created a monitor channel that's not connected to anything. But we're going to connect it to our speakers, the same speakers that are currently connected to the stereo output. And so I'm going to do that right now. And you'll notice that after I've done that, the stereo output is now not connected. And believe it or not, that is what you want. 
because the stereo output doesn't really need to be connected unless you're using some sort of external recording device to record your mix, like a DAT or a uh, portable recorder, or anything like that, that that records your mix. But you do not need them to be connected in order for the export audio mix down to work. Cubase can mix down the project without it without the main mix channel, which is the stereo out, being connected to any device ports on your audio interface. And because we're using the control room, this does not need to be connected because the signal that goes through the stereo out channel is being copied to the control room channel. So now that I've got that all set up, my speakers connected to the monitor one on the control room channel, I'll close this up and I'll play my project and I'll demonstrate that we are now listening to the control room channel by lowering the fader. Notice that the sound goes away because it goes with listening to the control room channel. But also notice that this does not affect the stereo output channel. That is still there. And this becomes important because it just shows that there's a separation between the control room and the stereo out. And later on, as you get more into the control room, uh, we'll be able to do different it's things America and put different kinds of sounds on this channel that have nothing to do with the stereo output. So this is how we've set up our control room very simply and easily. And right now you can use your project as you used it before with no changes whatsoever and no thinking whatsoever, just as you did before. The only difference now is that you have the listen bus available. And I'll go over what the listen bus does and how to use it in the next video. So stay tuned.